So we're here with Basant Dar, professor at the Stern School of Business and a top scholar in the world of machine learning, who's written a lot lately on should you trust your money to a robot. So Professor Dar, should you trust your money to a robot? Interesting question. Um, and the answer is a little yeah. bit more nuanced uh, than one might want. But the answer is that you know if you really look at the investment landscape mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, how long you hold for, mm -hmm. that's what really provides the clue as to who does better, humans or robots in that space. So for example, uh, if you take the world of high frequency trading, you know, I would argue that in that space, machines have already taken over. The speed is too quick, the decisions are too numerous, mm -hmm. there's lots and lots of data to learn from. So machines have that natural advantage over human beings who in the old days, by the way, used to look at screens and kind of you know, look for those fleeting opportunities and hit the button when they appeared. Uh, all that went away with machines and, and, and data. And so that space is already sort of taken over by. So private equity guys are still safe, but it's the trading floors that are gonna be replaced. A lot, of the, a lot of the organic material is gonna be replaced by machines. Right, so all of that sort of high frequency stuff where decisions are frequent, there's lots of data, that's sort of in the, in the realm of machines. On the other extreme, when you take um, investment situations where you're holding periods of years, you know, you sort of take the long view. Yep. Um, you know, there you have you know, sort of the legendary traders like Warren Buffett or yeah. Stanley Druckenmiller who've had awesome track records mm -hmm. in terms of investing uh, for the long term. Um, and machines really don't have a good basis for investing in that space. There's not enough data, there's not enough instances to learn from. So that's really the domain of human beings. Um, although ironically, uh, humans have done quite poorly at that. So uh, the lesson so far is that it is very difficult to beat the market, which consists of um, you know, a carefully curated set of the strongest companies in the US economy, for example, right? So those yeah. are hand-picked companies. And for you to beat those and make better stock picks than the index on a long-term basis turns out to be very difficult. And that's what the data shows us. And, but is, that's the basis of kind of the efficient markets hypothesis, isn't it? That at the end of the day, it's very hard to beat the market over the long term, isn't it? Well, that's, that, that's, another, that's another twist. That's an interesting sort of twist on that. Right. Uh, and, and one could certainly interpret uh, the evidence in that way, namely that uh, when your investment horizons are that long, yeah. Uh, don't think you're smarter than the market. Right? Yeah. The, the market's doing a pretty good job. Um, and there are very few people who actually have the insight or the foresight to actually beat the market, right? So that's what the data suggests. So we're talking, there's a lot of startups that are trying to take sentiment from Twitter and different social media platforms and then turn it into alpha. So this gets me to sort of the space in the middle, mm -hmm. right? I talked about the high frequency on the one hand and the very long-term uh, investing on the other hand. There's a lot of action sort of in the middle where your holding periods are days to weeks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there, you're sort of in this in-between space where you still have lots of data and the sources and volume of data in that space are increasing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's providing more of an opportunity for machines to mm -hmm. step into that space. Um, and I think that's where we're going to see a lot of growth in terms of robotic investing is in that space in the middle where you're not high frequency and you're not really long term mm -hmm. and you're looking for more and better diverse sources of data uh, on which to build strategies mm -hmm. and so that's what serves as kind of the input for the robot to learn from and build uh, its trading strategies. Thanks professor. You're welcome.